All right, Lauren. Yes. Lauren, how old are you? I am 32 years old. Are you from Phoenix? Um, I've been here 23 years, but I'm from back east originally. What state? Uh, Delaware. And what brings you all the way out here? Uh, my family came out here. How long ago was that? Uh, 1998. Do you like it more out here? No, I hate it here. People are so rude here. But you know what? I like the winters here. I like the winters here. What's your situation right now? Um, I actually just got off the streets. I was homeless for three years. I got a housing voucher. So if anybody watches this, there are there is help out there for you. You just have to be willing to wait patiently. It took me three years to get the housing voucher, but it pays my rent for life. Where'd you get the voucher? Uh, CBI, actually. CBI helped me get it. You just talk to a navigator and they help you get it. So what, you had to go through all their programming and everything? No, I didn't go through any programming. I didn't have to do any drug rehabs or anything like that. It just, your name goes on a waiting list and when your name gets called, you get your voucher. People are getting their voucher within six months now. I waited three years. Three years? Yeah. So if anybody out here wanted to get off of homelessness, they could. it's, it's that easy, choice. huh? Yeah, it's a choice to be homeless. What do you have to, like, have to join that program? Chronically homeless, that's the only requirement. Do you have to have like a ID, social security and all that stuff? Um, they help you get that. So like, as you're waiting for your name to be called in, they'll help you get your ID, they pay for it. They help you get your social security card, they pay for that. They help you get your birth certificate, they help you get all that so that when your voucher comes in, you're ready to go. Okay, what about like they access? They help you with access, they help you with food stamps, I'm on all that. Yeah, and they help you, they have, um, it's called a navigator and they help you get on all of those things so you're set up you know what i mean even if you're homeless you can get food stamps so <laughs> so how'd you end up homeless out here um i was in rehab and i was in a sober living and i ended up relapsing yeah and the sober living kicked me out and i ended up meeting my fiance on the streets and i just stayed with him i just didn't want to be sober at the time am i sober now no <laughs> but that's okay we all struggle yeah, I'm doing better than I was. I'm on methadone, so. Do you have any family out here in Phoenix? Um, my dad passed away two years ago, but um, my mom's out here, but she's an addict as well. So okay. it's kind of a hard, it's a hard relationship to have when you're trying to be sober, you know? Yeah. Do you have any kids? I have one son. He lives with my stepmom. I don't get to see him or I don't get to talk to him. That's because of my actions, doing what I do. What do you do out here to survive right now? Do you have a job or what are you doing? I don't have a job. I'm waiting for a disability to kick in, um, but I don't work. I just kind of stay to myself, stay in my house. It's my own little bubble, you know? Yeah. That's pretty much all I do. So is it dangerous out here in the streets? Uh, yeah, just last night my fiance got robbed at gunpoint. Yeah. Uh, I was jumped by 13 people. Um, I've been gang raped. Uh, yeah, it's very dangerous out on the streets. I don't recommend it. I mean, the lifestyle is fun. I'm not going to lie. There's a, there's a sense of fun to it. Not having any responsibilities, not having to answer to anybody. But yeah, it's very dangerous. The reason why I ask you that is because I noticed a lot of people walk around with bats, machetes, and stuff yeah, like you that. you have to. You have to. Because at the end of the day, it's your life or theirs. I mean, yeah. when I got jumped... It was bad. They broke a bat over my fiance's head. They pistol whipped him four times. They stabbed him with the broken bat, lacerated his liver. They kicked me into oncoming traffic. It was bad. It was all over the news. It was bad. Oh, was it? Yeah. What was the story called or what? It was just a jumping on 19th Avenue in Northern, which is a horrible area. What channel did it come out on? Uh, channel 5. Okay. Yeah. When you were homeless out here, where were you staying at? Um, I first was on 19th Avenue in Northern, and that's where a lot of the bad shit kind of happened to me. And then we ended up on 32nd Street in Indian School. And then I got, my fiance went to jail on a charge for me. And I ended up getting like into a place and like living with a friend and making money, not in a good way by any means, but making money, got a cell phone, got up on my feet a little bit. And I was in Mesa, and then I came over here. Um, I was on 24th Street in Van Buren up until about uh, two weeks ago. We just moved in here two weeks ago. So you were staying at the hotels there? No, no, no. We had an apartment over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got my voucher two years ago. Okay. So I've been off the streets for about two years, but I'm still in the streets. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I still mingle in the streets. Yeah. yeah. Why do you still mingle out here, though? 
It's a lifestyle, you know? The lifestyle is fun. Is it hard to kick it? It is. It is hard to kick it. And you meet, like, I'm a social worker. I have my degree in social work. And you meet so many cool individuals and, like, people with different storylines that you just can't help but, like, want to get to know the people out here, you know? Yeah. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> If we have any younger viewers and they're thinking about trying substances or running the streets. Don't do it. Don't do it. I lost everything. Um, I'm, a, I'm a trust fund baby. I had everything I could ask for and I lost it all. And, and I got it all back because I was sober and I just got robbed for everything I owned two weeks ago. Like my house was kicked in and they stole everything. It's not worth it. Don't try it. It's not. There's no substance. Once you try a substance, your mind is completely changed forever and you'll never, you'll always want to feel that way. So if you can stop yourself from trying that first use, you'll never have to feel that way again. So just don't take the first use. I had my, my parents had money. I grew up very wealthy and I had everything I could want, need. I had a vehicle, I had my place. I, you know, I, I had been married prior and uh, I gave it all up to be it for what? I had nothing to show for it. It's not worth it. So you had a good childhood growing up? Yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't say it was a good childhood, but I, financially it was a good childhood, yeah. Yeah, do you have any siblings? Yeah, I have one sister. How is she doing? She's good. She's sober. She doesn't have addiction issues. She smokes pot, but it's just like, I feel like it's luck of the draw. You yeah. know, you're either an addict or you're not an addict. How did you start hanging out out here on the streets or I just, with honestly, people I like that? I hang out on the streets, and then when I became homeless, that's when I started hanging out on the streets. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was raped in 2019, and I broke seven ribs, and they put me on painkillers, and when my ribs healed... They stopped my painkillers cold turkey and I was going through withdrawal. So I started buying my pills like through people and then I couldn't find pills and now it's blues everywhere. Yeah. So I just kind of matured from one thing to the next, you know, it was just a cycle. Yeah, that's just crazy, huh? Yeah. All right, well, hey man, thank you for sharing your story. I really do appreciate it. Yeah. Are you okay with me using this on my YouTube channel and yeah, social media? Of course. And just in case somebody wants to reach out to you with any sort of help or donations, do you have any contact information that you want to share? Um, sure. Like an email? Um, I have a phone number. You can always contact me on my phone number, 480-324. Um, I also have a cash app, which you can text me and I'll give you my cash app info. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you ever need help getting into a rehab or a detox center, please give me a call. Day or night, I'll always help somebody. What about um, email? Do you have an email? Um, I do have an email. It's uh, jlhahn2018 at gmail.com. All right. Thank you for sharing your story. You're welcome.